Inheritance is one of the key concepts in Java and most development teams prefer using it in their domain model. Unfortunately, relational table models don't support the concept of inheritance. The JPA specification defines multiple mapping strategies to bridge the gap between the object-oriented and the relational world. I explain them in great detail in my ultimate guide to inheritance mappings. When I recently taught these mapping strategies in an in-house workshop, I was asked if it's possible to combine inheritance type single table with inheritance type joint. This is not an uncommon question, especially if the team is working on a huge and complex enterprise application. But the answer to that question is no. Based on the JPA specification, persistence providers can support this, but they don't have to. Hibernate doesn't support the mix of multiple strategies. But in most cases, you can combine your inheritance mapping with a secondary table mapping to achieve your mapping goals. In this video, I will show you how to map this inheritance hierarchy to this table model. Hi, I'm Tom Janssen. Welcome to another video. If you want to build incredible efficient persistence layers with Hibernate and Spring Data JPA, please subscribe and click the bell to get new videos every week. And also don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. In the first step, you need to define your inheritance mapping. When using inheritance type single table, you are mapping all classes of the inheritance hierarchy to the same database table. The type of each record gets stored in a discriminator column. I explained other mapping strategies in my guide to inheritance mappings. To define this mapping, you need to annotate your superclass with an entity and an inheritance annotation and set the strategy to inheritance type single table. You can also add a discriminator column annotation to define the name of your discriminator column. The definition of the subclasses is straightforward. They only need to extend the superclass and you have to annotate them with add entity. And the same is the case for all other levels of the inheritance hierarchy. All entity objects of this inheritance hierarchy will get mapped to the table defined for the superclass. If you don't annotate it with a table annotation, your persistence provider will use the simple class name as the table name. After you mapped all classes of your inheritance hierarchy to the same database table, you can define a secondary table for each of them. This distributes the attributes of the entity class to two or more database tables. By doing that, you get relatively close to the table mapping you would get using a combination of inheritance type single table and inheritance type joint. I already added a secondary table annotation to the Chess Swiss Tournament, Chess Swiss Tournament for Men, and Chess Swiss Tournament for Women entity classes. In the example of the Chess Swiss Tournament entity class, I want to store the maximum number of players allowed for this tournament in the max players attribute. I want to map it to a column with the same name in the Chess Swiss Tournament table. This requires a secondary table annotation on the class to define the name of the secondary database table. This annotation is repeatable and you could define multiple secondary tables for your entity class. And you need to annotate the attribute with a column annotation and reference the name of the secondary table. The secondary table mapping of the Chess Swiss Tournament class gets inherited by all subclasses. On each subclass, you can define additional secondary tables using secondary table annotations. In this example, I use that to map the number of players with a grandmaster title playing in a chess Swiss tournament for men to a column in a separate table. And for the chess Swiss tournament for women entity, I want to map the number of players with a woman grandmaster title to a column in a different separate table. Based on this mapping, Hibernate maps the entity classes to the table model that I showed you in the introduction of this video. Let's use this mapping to persist a new chess Swiss tournament for men entity object. After activating my recommended development configuration, you can see in the log output that Hibernate inserted new records into the chess tournament table with all attributes defined by the chess tournament class, chess Swiss tournament table with all attributes added by the chess Swiss tournament class, and chess Swiss tournament man table with all attributes added by the chess Swiss tournament man class. As you saw in this video, even though Hibernate doesn't support the mixing of inheritance mapping strategies, 
you can use a secondary table annotation to define additional tables to which your entity class gets mapped. This enables you to map your entity classes to a table structure similar to the combination of inheritance type single table and inheritance type joint. When using this, please be aware that for every query that selects one of the subclasses, Hibernate will include a join clause to all secondary tables defined by that subclass and its superclasses. This increases the complexity of the SQL statement and slows down its execution. Such a complex mapping also makes it much harder to understand and maintain your persistence layer. Therefore, I recommend simplifying your mapping as far as possible and not using a secondary table mapping on multiple levels of your inheritance hierarchy. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about Hibernate, you should join the Persistence Hub. It gives you access to all my video courses, including multiple ones about Hibernate, two monthly Q&A calls, monthly coding challenges, a community of like-minded developers, and regular expert sessions. And if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Bye.